So I tout myself on being a pretty, pretty good person, you know. You know, and there's that scripture where uh, Jesus says, he says, why callest thou me good? There's one good, and that's God. And I think it's interesting that we like, we create a spectrum for ourselves, and if we feel that we're on a high enough part of the spectrum, somehow we're a good person because there are people that are worse than us. And it's so easy to overlook and omit things that we should be doing because our lives are hard and we're worried about us. My wife is, uh, you know, neither one of us are perfect. I'll be the last one to say that that she's perfect or that I'm perfect. But she sees things and does things that I don't have the strength or the, the, the charity to do yet in my life that I'm working on. I think greed gets in our lives and we, you know, think that... Um, People get themselves into situations because of things that they've done, situations they've been in, and consequences of their actions. Right now, my wife is putting shoes on a homeless woman that we met in the park. Uh, she insisted we go to Walmart, and we bought her a backpack and food, toiletries, tampons, and... You know, I hardly spend money on myself as it is. I, I'm i super stingy. And it's a, a really, you know, when it comes to uh, financial uh, freedom, you know, I feel like we do pretty, pretty well because we're able to stretch our money a little further on the means that we have. And we've been able to save up quite a bit, even living in Los Angeles. You know, it's a double-edged sword because I'm pretty stingy and pretty good with my money. It causes me to overlook the needs of others and to put my needs above the needs of the one, the lost sheep. Like I said, I, against my will, I, I shouldn't say that. Like I, I, I say, I, not, not that I was unwilling to, I was just a little bit reluctant to, you know, to go drop money. It was substantially more than I would ever spend, you know, shoot on even camping supplies for a camping trip. Um, doesn't matter the amount, but my wife wanted to make sure that uh, this woman would claim she's been homeless for six years. I don't want to get too close. I don't think it's right to get her her face in the video. My wife's on the left. The lady's on the on the right. She's actually sleeping in the park, but the sprinklers started going off between the time that we left her and the time we got back. So she moved to the concrete, and we said we were going to be back soon before the park closed in six minutes. <sighs> There's not a lot of things that I know for sure. But one of the things I know is the Lord is mindful of every single person. I don't know why bad things happen to people, why people get, you know, there seems to be so much, there's such an abundance, even in America, even now, that it seems like it should be disseminated to everyone so not saying everyone should have equal stuff without doing work it's not about that but everyone should be able to it should be nearly an, un, an inalienable right to put your head on a pillow with a roof over your head every night that should be an unalienable right and it's not and it's really unfortunate but christ is mindful of this woman right here i don't know what she, I don't know what happened in her life that led her to this point. And maybe I'll find out, you know, we're new to this neighborhood. Maybe I'll find out it was because of things that she did, or maybe she did nothing wrong and she was abused or not, but it doesn't matter. When, uh, so I'm, I'm a Latter-day Saint, and one of the scriptures is from Messiah, um, either chapter 2 or chapter 4 says, when you're in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. And he talks about in Mosiah chapter 4, he says, and I'll read this, because this is really, this is really cool, and if you, if you ever, you know, there's, we live in a pretty Christian nation, a lot of people claim that, that uh, they believe in Christ, but there is, there are some tough doctrines, it's like, man, like, this is what, this is what is expected of me. So I apologize if I get a little bit uh, 
a little bit emotional. It's from Mosiah 4 in the Book of Mormon. This is verses 16 to 18. It says, And also ye yourselves will succor those that stand in need of your succor, and ye will administer of your substance unto him that standeth in need, and ye will not suffer that the beggar putteth up his petition to you in vain, and turn him out to perish. Perhaps thou shalt say, That man or woman has brought upon himself his misery, therefore I will stay my hand, and I will not give him unto him of my food, nor a part of him of my substance, that he may not suffer, for his punishments are just. But I say unto you, O man, whosoever doeth this, the same hath great cause to repent. And except he repenteth of that which he hath done, he perisheth forever, and he hath no interest in the kingdom of God. Verse 19, For are we not all beggars? Do we not all pretend? Do we not all depend on that same being, even God, for all the substance which we have, for both food and raiment, and for gold and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind? Verse 21. And now if God who has created you, on whom you are dependent for your lives, and for all that ye have and are, doth grant unto you whatsoever ye ask that is right in faith, believing that ye shall receive, O oh, then how ye ought to impart of your substance that ye have one to another. Verse 22, last one I'll read. And if ye judge the man that putteth up his petition to you for your substance, that he perisheth not, and condemn him, how much more just will be your condemnation for withholding your substance, which doth not belong to you, but to God, to whom also your life belongeth, and yet ye putteth up no petition, nor repent of the thing which thou hast done. I think this is a good experience for me because I am not, there are a lot of things that I do right and, and it's easy for us to get uh, complacent and think, well, you know, I don't make any mistakes. You know, I take care of my wife. I'm a hard worker. I don't cheat my boss at work. I don't cheat the company. I work. I have integrity in my work. And, and yet there are still things that, um, uh, that I lack, and sorry, sorry, I'm just talking to the camera. Um, so this is a good experience for me. Maybe it's something that I needed more than this woman needed, and you know. I can write my phone number down and give it to her. Um, I don't know if we have a pen. There's a sharpie in here. Oh, there's canola bars in here too. Are these canola bars okay, or are these old? How did now? Are these older? Or They'll be fine. She'll be fine. I'll write it here. I'll just put Sharpie on this on this receipt. That'll work. Does she have a phone? Anyways, guys, that's the that's the message for today. Um, and trust me, I don't take any glory in this because I'll be honest. When you live in Los Angeles long enough and you see enough homeless people and that scripture hits so hard because that's so true about the way that, you know, you are, it's a learned behavior to feel about, about homeless people that they've brought upon them their misery. Therefore, I'll, therefore I will stay my hand, you know, because we don't know, we don't know the circumstances. We treat them the way that Christ would treat them and he doesn't really care. He really doesn't care what the reason is. And she was hungry too. She started eating straight away. Yeah. She ate that banana and then she was eating a bagel. Wow. Like poor woman. She was, and I, when I hugged her, she was spinning Next bones. Next right. And I could just feel all turn. her bones in her back and her shoulders. Like, poor girl. Anyways, I'm not trying to convert anyone to my faith or glory in the thing which is done. Just be mindful of how how good your life is and just look outside yourself maybe not in that way that we just did in a quarter of a mile but something that's within your ability to do and when i was talking to her it's like you know she could barely kind of look up at me you know like yeah. like there's just too much broken inside her to even be able to like look another person in the face and she wasn't on drugs she wasn't drinking like she didn't smell like booze she didn't sound mental, like... Yeah. Well, we should try to, to get her a shower. Not tonight, but... She said that her shoes had worn out, and so she left them on the trash. Hmm. 
opened since the thrift stores are open, even if she had money. Yeah. You know, she's got to waltz her way into Walmart. Barefoot. That ain't gonna work. Yeah. Any last words? Just love one another. I really amazing. wanted, I just, I just, I wanted her to know that somebody cared. That the reason why we helped her tonight was because God put us in her path because God wanted her to know that He loves her. You know, it's not because. Yeah, it's not because of us. Like, like it's because Jesus Christ. Yeah, like, like God he literally loves her. God put us in her path tonight, and He put it in our hearts to help her tonight because He desperately needed her to know that He loves her. You're a good woman, babe. You're like, a good woman. I felt the bag you're in the prayer because it's like, how do I convince someone who's been homeless for six years, who's laying in a park and with no shoes on, and then laying on the edge of the street trying to get away from the sprinklers, laying there with no shoes on, getting wet, how do I try to convince her in a prayer? Heavenly Father is aware of her and loves her. Like, like I... And so, I like, the main thing I could think to ask for in the prayer was just that the people that come into contact with her would be kind to her and help her. She'll stay safe. Yeah, I, yeah, I asked for that. For her safety. Because that is a real massive concern. Like, she's a little petite woman all alone out there you know, get stuck at night, and, and if people won't even, if people will see someone like her, and they don't even, or rather, like, they walk past someone like her, and their eyes just don't even see her, like, what are the odds that someone's gonna call the police if they hear someone's screaming, getting raped in the park, like, yeah. people are so oblivious to things, like,